Hey everybody, Ethan here from the Happy Pill Project with a quick reminder that if you like the content that we provide on this channel and want to help support us, please immediately smash the subscribe button below. Also, don't forget to like and share useful videos with your friends. If you have any questions, comments, or want to make a technique request, drop us a note in the comment section. Thanks again for your support. Before we add, and I want to explain like when you're going to do it and when you're not. So you're in a side control position, right? And this is all we're doing, okay? We're just getting comfortable, right? Either you just passed him or he's turning on you. And all you're doing is getting comfortable is chin strapping that neck and sitting super high up here on the turn. So you're like this, whatever position you are, right? All we're gonna do this is for a few minutes to recapture because I wanna add more, more sequences to it. So all you did here from this point, for whatever reason, he, he wasn't letting you step around, you couldn't, you couldn't make the turn, and you take this gamble and you grab onto his chin and as you sit back, you're sitting back super high. Right, and now there's a reason for it. I would love to be able to put my hands together and capture this, and now I'm gonna assume in this sequence that once you sit here, you got your hand over the top to put your hands together, and now we're gonna start attacking the neck. How we had been doing it was I came right back into him. I got this chin strap and I tried to cover this arm and put this leg behind him so he couldn't go to his back, and I can finish this chin strap. But what's gonna happen, I wanna sequence this to how we left off. And then I wanna to add to this. So you're here and you just sat back, but in this one, Paul comes up. So as Paul's coming up, I'm pulling back to throw this over. So we're obviously gonna finish him like this, but we're not gonna crank it. We're just getting here, okay? So the moment we're here, we're gonna ask our partner to dump out on us. Because if I haven't collected the hip on the back side, or I don't have any control of the top portion. Most of the time as you're choking, they're gonna come out of this pocket. You see it all the time in the UFC. You see it in, in high level BJJ. So I threw my leg over and he's dumping. So I'm learning to follow guys. I'm learning how to land this blade on this artery as I come up. So I never let go of the neck. Come back for a second. So I'll go super slow on the transfer. You're here. You just threw this over, Paul's dropping, and you're losing him. So I'm, I'm coming up, and I'm laying this on the blade as I transfer my hips to the other side to start finishing off the 10 finger. So this arm is pressing down. This is on the chin strap, right? So if you haven't, if, leave your PT down, right? So I explained this the other day. When you're here on this chin strap, this hand's laying on this artery, this hand that's on the chin strap is grabbing on the outside, outside of your wrist. And what you're doing is creating this little like, like a gator mouth, like a V shape to kill the artery because the Adam's apple sitting here in the V, but I don't need the Adam's apple. I need the two arteries sitting in. I'm turning the shoulder line for a reason. Okay, because I want to turn the shoulder line so I can have gravity on my side and using my legs to push into this artery. I have the bottom artery. Okay, I don't want him to come up to turtle, but if he comes up to turtle, we'll deal with him a different way. Let's just add, let's just do both, okay? And then I'm gonna add a sequence where we're north and south, and then we're gonna actually play it off of like a sequence, uh, the, like how they react off of you, okay? So as part of versions of this, um, I tell you the drilling classes, like if you can come consistently in the drilling class, I don't wanna teach instruction, I want you to get reps, and then people that come for reps, don't have the opportunity to rep because then I talk too much. Um, you're coming up, right? Like, so everything was exactly in those same patterns that we did where you're like this, right? And I'll explain this. You're coming around this turn and now for whatever reason, you couldn't get to that bottom hand or you made the spin early or you were trying to dig underneath and they came to the turtle and now you're spinning on this and you're driving and you're like this, okay? So he comes up to turtle and I'm sitting here like this, okay? I would love to be able to penetrate this hand, grab it onto the other side, and now start making this turn. Just jump with me, I'm not gonna force it. Jump over it, and now I take his back, which is the first one you're gonna do, right? But if I've jammed this thing in so tight, I'm watching where that neck is, and I'm gonna come back again on it, right? So if I was like this, so before when I, I came over, I was pinching and oh, trying to open, and now he's coming up, and I'm going like this, and I'm trying to stay super tight, and I'm trying to get my penetration through, 
but he's going to have different things on this. He might try to address this hand that's coming through. So no big deal. I come right back. So I look for it because if that, I'm going to have access to this chin. If that hand is buried in there, that chin is exposed. Like there's high probability that I can spin it back again. So I'm going to ask you to come inside here. And then one time you did connect. But then the second time I didn't. The second time I just grabbed onto this chin. And right as I turn, right, my, my, the, my, the outside of my quad is right here anyway, right? So if I was like this, and now I land this, and I'm starting to take this turn to drop here, I'm making that same connection to come back again on this side to reattack it again. I'm not stopping. Like if I can get to that chin, let me take it because I can always sprawl out on north south. What's the big deal? Like worst case scenario. I'm looking for that neck because I want to try to put you to sleep. And I'm here making this turn, right? And now he comes up and I come back. And I'm on this neck anyway, right? Because I want to take this again off of something that he's going to do to you. Because you're going to have to address this even deeper. Because at this point, when you spin back, him as a, as a really good player, he should know, yo, dude, I got to get you off my chin right now. I could care less about hooks. Anything. I don't care where you are. I got to get you off my chin right now. That's the only thing that he should be thinking. I don't care about spinning to the back. I don't care about you inserting. You're on my freaking chin, dude. You own half of my artery and my windpipe. I got to address it right now. So he should be addressing it right now. So I should be anticipating his counter again because I'm going to lose that chin strap. One, um, high level, you're going to lose it because he's going to address it right away. So I got to spin to the back off well, of the addressing of that chin strap. But I'm trying to tell you a storyline and how this plays out at different levels. Because what ends up happening in the lower levels, you don't play the game enough and your, your re reaction speed is, is slow. Man, that chin strap's going to go on. And then there's some people, you can't release that chin strap. If you saw Josh Hinger make her, and Stanley Rosa was on a tear that most people know who Stanley Rosa is. He's a really good black belt. That particular day, that young man was on a tear. He had submitted six of his opponents and he made the final with Josh. And now Josh had done the chin strap on everybody in the whole competition. And he latched on a chin strap from north, south, and through this kid who Stanley was, wasn't like Stanley was having a bad day. So that day he was on fire. He was on fire. And he came to the final with Josh Hanger, and Josh Hanger hit that chin strap. And I know Stanley in his head, everybody was screaming, dude, get that thing off your neck. Couldn't get it off. Couldn't get it off. So you're going to have different levels of the game, how it plays out. But let's go back to the move, okay? So you're here, and I'm asking you to do two versions. So everything attaches to how we were going anyway, right? He was super tight. He was protecting his neck or whatever things he was. And I caught this elbow, and I was on this frame, and I'm blocking. And he's got this thing so extended low. And I'm like, man, that pocket's there open right now. Why even address this hand? Because he's blocking that chin. I'm like, hell with this. I come over the top, and I'm coming through. And now he's coming up. And I'm going super tight with that knee jammed in. And I'm looking to get insertion. And now I've caught it. And now the first one I'm going to do is I'm going to roll him off of that neck. Jump with me, Paul. Yeah. Boom. He jumps. And now I catch on the other side. And I start attacking. But on the second one, man, he comes up really quick. And I'm trying to evaluate, do I have to, sh do I have to shift low down that, in that quadrant? But it's not there yet. I come here. I was open. Now I'm coming up. And I'm going, all right, he's coming up. But he's retracting. So I'm back again on this neck. And as I put my hands together, I'm pulling it out to throw it over on a high elbow guillotine again. Right? So there's two versions of it. On the third one, we got plenty of time. On the third one, I'll address when he starts peeling my hands okay, off of his neck because that's what he should have done. He should have addressed my chin strap right away as he came up. No reason to go anywhere and don't in competition when you tell me, oh, my, I was going to do this, a somersault. Dude, he's on your neck. Okay, so don't do that. Let's partner up, please. Let's do it. Thank you, bro. And how to sit. And that's actually why I was saying that thing just uh, maybe like three minutes ago. Is like visualize it, understand your position, your sensitivity, what's happening, why you're there. Like, let me explain this right now. You come like this, and now a guy comes a turtle, from a turtle, and you're sitting like this. I mean, like, dude, he's shoulder rolling on you. He's going to shoulder roll, he's going to lodge in, and then he's going to dislodge and throw you over, and then you're going to be in this scramble, right? 
you come around the turn, you like this. I'm here, like looking and pressing on that back hip. So I'm telling you to visualize it, right? Because if I don't press it and I'm sitting here like this, like I got no wedge, like let's look at this like I'm firing off this leg to push into this back hip because that's the back hip that's going to throw me, right? But you're sitting there like this, like thinking that, that this is cool. Like you're going to get thrown. And then this happened. There's a few people who make a living on this turn. They just let you pass. They're not that good at recovering. They don't have life flexibility, but they're good at getting a turtle and shoulder roll. And they can never command the guy, right? But I'm not there. I'm here, man. I'm like this. I'm pressing him back into that hip. Paul will tell you, like, I'm giving him a turn. Even if my hand's not here. And now you got this shoulder like this. You shouldn't be showing him that shoulder. You should be tight pushing this thing back where I'm covering it. Because I don't want this thing coming over the top. But your position's all wrong because of that because you don't visualize. You don't, like, you got to really, really think about the move. Like, what is he going to do? Where is he going to go? Right? And I'm like this. And I'm pushing back into that hip. And I'm looking to see. Because let's turn this this way so people can see. Why am I going to show him the back of that tricep? Because that's the thing he wants to throw. So I'm like this. I don't show him anything. And I'm pressing into that hip to see if I can get insertion of this arm. Right? So what's the, where is he going to go? Like, and you might say to him, like, you look weird. I understand everything he's going to do. He might sit back that way. Right? And if he sits back that way, I'm going to beat this multiple. I could beat this three different ways. One is, let's say hypothetically, he does sit back this way. I was like this. I could just shoot forward on him, right? I could flip my hip and go the other way, and I'll beat you every time. because Not because of speed or strength, but let's say he sits back, and I sit back this way also. Like, so now you're wide open for me to either punch this, recollect this, and what the hell's the big deal? That if you're not magically going to stand up from here, because I'm the top player, and if you fight to get the turtle, I'm already here reattacking in this quadrant. I was there anyway. Like, so what do I have to worry about? I have nothing to worry about, right? Because you might say, Mike, you look strange in this position. Yeah, I know, but I'm perfectly set to come back in on that neck that way. I'm driving up the hip. I understand the mechanics of everything this man wants to do. Everything. And I'm ready to counter anything and I don't have to move far. And you could be the bigger, stronger, but if you don't understand, like, if I don't explain it, then, you know, like, you got to understand the story. I'm not doing anything special. I'm like this, with a plank here, driving that leg power into here. I don't show him no tricep. My cover is here. I'm looking for where I can put this hand in. I'm ready to counter your three turns. You're not shoulder rolling on me because I'm like this. Right, And let's say you do shoulder roll. I take one step forward and slide my hip forward too. I'm perfectly set up for your shoulder roll. Are you going to do a duck under? There is no duck under, dude. So there's no magic here. Understand everything you're doing. I'm just looking for one thing. I'm either looking to punch you in that freaking face, right? or I'm looking for that neck, or I'm looking a seatbelt. But I'm hunting with this hand right now. But I locked up all the positions to capture you if you go anywhere. Right? So I'm just going to ask you at this point, when you were here and you spun, you drop, and I make this turn, I'm pushing into that hip to get insertion of this hand. I don't know where this hand is, but this one I don't know. You might tell me, oh, Mike, I'm going to cut. He's going to laugh. The high player's not going to do that. He's not going to leave that thing exposed like that. And without a gi, it's like, I know they show it. I'll just bring it up really quick. Literally, like, I'll kill you. I'll tell you you have to walk home. If you lift your arm out there like that to get caught, because why would your arm be up there anyway? You should have been ready to shoulder roll. You should be buried, and then you should be blocking up this hip. And, like, so many things that, like, this is just so, like, where they go, okay, so you come in here, and then you grab, like, okay, if you could do it, but this is not happening at black to black, okay? So I just told you why this whole setup was, like, a certain structure and I'm going to ask the person, just, you're going to still do the same insertion, same catch. So you're still dropping. But I'm going to ask the person, when you get here, right, just so that you can start understanding the roll. Because as I'm here, they're going to shoulder roll. And all I want to do is clear my hip north also. So as Paulie comes up on the shoulder roll, I just slide forward too. 
That's all I'm doing. I'm not trying to re-square on you nothing. All I'm looking to do is re-square and uh, slide forward and re-attack over the top. But sometimes you're going to come far. Sometimes I can't predict how far you're going to go or how he rolls or how he brings this machete over the top. Because sometimes high-level guy, they're bringing that thing like an axe kick. They're not going to go on the shoulder. No, they're bringing it like woof. Like, so you, I don't know how far you're going to land, but you're perfectly landing at that perch right there that when Paulie comes over, you're set to come in. And now he lands looking away from you. So your probability of landing to a great spot again, whether it be north-south on this bottom quadrant as he comes up, or you can get back and fast enough, or on the land, if I can break hold of that elbow or that hand, I got a high probability to stop your, fi your finish turn. Right, so I understand all the mechanics. So let's partner up again. Stop. Okay, that's not, if everybody can see, that knee's going inside the pocket, that's not what I did, okay? My knee's on the outside for a reason. If Danny sits back, backstep it, backstep it. You were late on the collection. And I'll tell you what just happened. Come back again. He was late here with not having this, where he backstepped, right? And now he's like this on this side, trying to step it over. I should have been here. I should have, this is where I'm telling you to put your knee. He just got, I don't know if you guys noticed it, but at the last second, he got jammed up and had to flip over. And he had to alter his hips on the last portion when he just sat back, he felt it, right? But if I'm nine knees on the outside and I'm like this, and now as he lands, it's easy for me to get rid of my secondary leg that I go right into the side control set. Right? Go, ahead, go back again. You're up again. Right? So you can see it. Right? Go back. Yes, sir. Perfect. Stay right there for me. We got issues going on here, right? Because you just showed the rear tricep, right? So his shoulder rolls. Shoulder rolls, sir. And now he's going to recover on you. Come back again. Right? And didn't I say that this hand stays here till the head, the head, Right? And now, when I'm here and I'm all set, now your knees are the other way, outside. So I'm ready to set. I'm pressing here. Now take the hand out, right? And collect the back hip. And now drop this. This guy should be touching, right? And now you're ready to hold that hip and make the turn. And if, yes, that needs a little bit of help. Go back again. I hope this is making sense to everybody. That's when the, head, the hand comes out. Go back again, start from the beginning. So head and keep the hand in the position, right? Transfer the head and the kneecap at the same time. Yes, sir. Well, look where the head is. Right? The head should, yeah. And turn it, to, yes, sir. Push into that hip. And now take this hand and cover this, right? And now when you make this back step, I don't want this guy to windshield wiper. This is what I mean by one of their escapes is just to put this, this on your hip, right? And sit back on this calf and now take this guy through. Yeah, so can I go in there for one second? So when you're here like this, right? And this kneecap's here. I don't want this to be here because he'll butterfly on me, right? So when you're here, now I took this hand out. I cover this hip. I'm going to stay up for one second. When I go transferring this hip, I never gave him exposure to do that. So there's no gap here because a high level black will be sensing if he can lift this leg up to make this blade on my inside hip. So I, there's got to be detail there too, right? So when you're flipping it, this is not leaving. I'll do it from different angles. I'm like this. And I'm taking it. I'm here. I've never given you the opportunity to do that to me, right? So, I mean, these are just minor things, but they're going to save you. Now when I tell you technique is your sword, because everything that you did, all this muscle and strength and athleticism, I'm just following you like a, like a blanket. Like you're moving, uh, bum, 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 and like no strength. So, but if I have to do these things, because then you need strength to combat the position you, you were off on. Okay, Joy, can you go back in there one time? Right, so there was a bunch of little details Right? You're here, right? And now you're making this commitment to cut. Yes, sir. Head, head. And look at the angle now. You're on this T shape that that thing's going to clear. That's the better. Okay. 
You can see, come in there for a second. You're like this. I'm not like this. Because if I'm on a T, he's going to go like that and he's going to clear me. I'm like this. I'm pushing into this hip. And I don't know how this is going to turn. Once I make this commitment and I'm here, like I'm backstepping this to drop this, and now I take command fully of this back hip. I've never given you spacing or detached from you at any point, right? But I'm not here on a T. So I tell you, like, you got, and now you're going to be late on the other transfer. If he goes on a shoulder roll, you're going to be up late on that top quadrant. These things matter at the highest level. Um, we went over, I'm not going to pick anymore, um, but we went over a bunch of things right there. Try your best to feel the move. Feel the move. It will save you so much time because 90% of the people end up here consistently when a guy show, goes on a roll where you're in a side control and he fights to get the turtle and you just don't know what to do. And instead, he comes to turtle, goes side control. This is how this will go down. If you sit with me, I'll show you about 15 rolls like this. He comes up to turtle and he's kind of turtle and go. And that's exactly what they do. Like, why? Like, that was the time to go into those spots. And instead of going, oh, and then they start coming here. Like, you should have been dropping and collecting and transferring. Like, but instead, that's exactly, you should sit with me. When I say 20, I said 15. I mean more like about 25 to 35 within all the roles. There'll be that sequence with a mechanical reset on a body hug. Okay, so let's partner up and let's pay attention to detail. Let's do it.